Welcome to RPG Archive, and uh, we got a hell of a show, and we're having a little change of scenery today. I'm going to be sitting here, and I will be over here. I guess both of us are just going to be chilling out. Teddy, we're here together in Arizona. <laughs> hey, it's Spencer. How's it going, here man? Here the live archive. Oh, yeah. This is the first one there's ever been. Wow. Amazing. We got four cameras up. <laughs> Cat. The Cat's challenge. hanging yeah. out. Just partying? Like us. Uh, and we got a hell of a game today. <laughs> uh, didn't expect to be doing this on the channel. Not even sure if it's supposed to be on this channel. We're playing Beyond Oasis, the Sega Classic. That's where we are right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, before we get into any of that, obviously Teddy's the, the channel's majority. Uh, it's... Um, he does everything. He does a bunch of Q&A. He just released a Q&A like a day ago. That's right. Uh, so check it out. It's got all of your questions in it. For, pulls them straight from the Discord. Keep them coming. Whatever you want. Whatever you want to know. I may reject the question, but doesn't mean you can't ask it. Anything new on the horizon? Turbo Throwdowns. Pitting up the Sega Classics. I actually pit this one up with Alex on Turbo Throwdown versus Shinobi 3. We both agreed that Shinobi 3 won, but that doesn't negate how much uh, we saw potential in this game. So I'm glad to be covering it today. Well, and speaking of RPG Archive, the next one that's coming out is uh, Fantasy Star 1 versus Fantasy Star 2. That's right. And I'm representing, I think, the favored one, although I think people like both. So. Fantasy Star 4. Yeah, that's going to be... <laughs> that's not even going to be a close one. <laughs> but 1 verse 2, stay tuned for that. All right. And of course... We're on the button mappers. Yeah. Hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. I'll get you here in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is your spot. <laughs> uh, all right, you ready to hop into Beyond Oasis? Absolutely. To Oasis and Beyond. We're gonna start Just with your stuff. <laughs> start with the development. Um, the developer was Ancient. We'll get to them in a second. They're a little old. The publisher is Sega. Nothing for that, yeah. All right. Producer is Yuzo Koshiro. Renowned musical producer. This is his first game. Really? This is his first game? He actually founded Ancient with his mother. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. I wouldn't do that with my mom. <laughs> she doesn't know how to use a computer. Uh, designed by Kataru Uchimura. Well pronounced. I'm getting better. Programmer Yukio Takahashi. No complaints. Artists, only one. Ayano Koshiro. Uh, see the family. I think that's the sister. And she did uh, Streets of Rage too. I don't know about she, but I know that they at Ancient. That was their game. Hmm. Uh, the writer is Juri Ogawa. Yeah, you might pronounce that like Juri. 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 Julie. Julie. Okay. Yuzo Koshiro was a composer. Right. Who was actually also the producer up there that you saw. Yeah. Um, we'll get to the release dates and everything, but it's an it's listed here as action adventure, although there are some RPG elements to it. There's also beat em up elements. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zelda elements. And elements. Element elements. <laughs> <laughs> it's got all the elements, including elements. That's right. Water, fire, earth, uh, wind. Yeah. <laughs> well, on the path to uh, the release of this game, uh, there's, an, there's an interesting discussion here because this is part of something called the Mega Roleplay Project Okay. that Sega rolled out. Uh, they saw what was going on on the Super Nintendo and were freaking out. Over there, they had, like, Breath of Fire. They had Final Fantasy, I think at this point, Final Fantasy 3? Or, no, no, sorry. Final Fantasy IV, two in America, but they're they're more talking about the Famicom. So that actually, now I'm thinking about one of the other Final Fantasy may have come out. I don't know exactly, mm. but it's because we're in America, we get different dates. But uh, Final Fantasy was going crazy over there, uh, and uh, they wanted in. They probably wanted Dragon Quest too. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> and SMT. And SMT. Well, two, one, and two were Famicom games. We got to cover those. We're gonna get there. <laughs> 2023 <laughs> gold. Yes. Uh, 
But uh, it was an attempt to reverse their fortunes by giving the ailing Mega Drive uh, RPG suite a seismic kick in the pants. This is not my writing. I found this <laughs> online. Um, seven RPGs were born from this. The first two Dragon Slayer Legend of Heroes games. Okay. Shining Force CD. Surging Aura. After Armageddon Gaiden. And the story of Thor. Which is Beyond Oasis. Yes. Shining Force CD and Ragna Senti, known as Crusader of Senti and Soleil, I guess, mm. in North America and Europe, respectively, were localized immediately. And the story of Thor was also released under the name Beyond Oasis in the United States. Right. So, uh, interesting. What do you... What, okay, and I can... Let's go into the Mega Drive or Mega RPG project a little bit, just to get some more background. Began in mid-1994 and applied to a small handful of first-party Sega Mega Drive and Me- Sega Mega CD until early 1995. The applied game logo of this project is printed on the box and pin badge... This is a very strangely worded <laughs> I'm sorry. Again, I did not write this. A uh, pin badge of each title was shit. And I had a picture of it. I guess I, I forgot to get a picture I don't of it. understand the sentence. What? They actually put like a badge on each box. Oh, that shows this is part of the mega project. Yeah, yeah. So you knew this was like their... Like, we got RPGs. This is in Japan? The yes. Japanese box art? Only in Japan, yeah. Because the North American one is just a set of eyes. Yeah. The br- <laughs> <laughs> a nice set of eyes. Was pretty... <laughs> This branding was only used in Japan and fell out of use as the company began to focus more on the Sega Saturn. Later RPGs such as Light Crusader were not considered part of this movement. Okay. What do you think of their big drive to get some RPGs over there? Respectable. I think it paled, likely, but you got some pretty unique things out of it. What did they say about Light Crusader? Light Crusader? Yeah, you read that at the end there. Later RPGs... Oh, such, such as Light like, Crusader were just not considered part. You know what's confusing to me is that like a lot of these, the seven titles, these are Saturn games. This is like a late Genesis game mm-hmm. that's coming out at the time of the Saturn. So there's like some console confusion to me with some of these titles. But it's still cool. This is an interesting title. Yeah, I'm trying to piece together with the story of like... How does Thor play in, like, they just used a character that people might understand as the God of Thunder? I guess, but this is the Arabian Nights setting with Prince Ali. (laughs) So that's confusing. But I've read that a homebrew port was released later that has a more one-to-one translation of the text. So some things make more sense. I think some of the names are changed. Right. So maybe there's something there. Maybe he is Thor. Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> take it. <laughs> the story of Ali. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's interesting too because because technically, like Shining Force is not the biggest, but it's still considered a good a good game, a good series, especially two. I yeah. really like two. Um, Fantasy Star Four is apparently very very good. And right. We will be getting to that at some point. The others, I don't know. It has its fans, though. I mean, obviously, and Fantasy Star lives on with the the online games where they they took it to more of an action realm. But clearly, the 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 um, what do you call it? What do you call it? Like the uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Of they own a brand or something. Well, I'll just say brand. Okay. The brand of it is enough that that it's been profitable for so long. For so like, which? For Fantasy Star. Yeah. So why? Why did they all of a sudden want to deviate from that and make like all these random other RPGs? They had like a good set. Make Fantasy Star Five. <laughs> I think because I, well, the first Fantasy Star is a hit. Second one is good. Four is like the magnum opus to that point. I think that comes in like the post era. Like if we had the dates in front of us, that might help. But. I see this as more of a, a quest to figure out which one is going to be you mm. know, the next big RPG. You know, Nintendo's got all these RPGs. We want to show some breadth. Yeah, that's true. A fire. A fire. Capcom. Right. I don't like that game. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of our community does. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I do... I also find it interesting it was done in 1994, and most of these games came out in 1994 and 1995. Mm. So it didn't really give them a lot of time to like make a great game. How so? 
Well, a lot of games take years to make. Yeah. These games, I mean, if they were even told in 1994, we need RPGs, and some of them released like the same year, mm-hmm. and at best, like the next year, because it ended in 1995. Yes, but these aren't all Sega in-house. Like, Ancient is the company that's taking care of Beyond Oasis, so... I don't know who's doing like surging aura. I don't even think half these games are localized. Yeah, I don't think so. I think only three. So, but but I just don't. I don't. I feel like they didn't give these developers like enough time to really knock one out of the park, like make something Final Fantasy caliber. Yeah. Well, they didn't have the team for it either. Ancient it was made up of fifteen people. <laughs> So that's what it is. Yeah. We're going to just throw Yuzo Koshiro's name out there and hope like magic pops up. No. like. <laughs> well, speaking of ancient, you said they were old. Wait, get ready to feel old, boys and girls. Because <laughs> here's the games that they made. So- Sonic the Hedgehog for Game Gear in 1991. Yeah, this is their first project. So uh, ancient was founded in 1990. I think that they s- stopped like... Their main projects were in 94, although they have games that came out later. I think there was something on 3DS in 2014. Didn't I talk to Alex about these fuckers on like one of the map or one of the button mappers? Did you? What was mm-hmm. the context? I think on one of the uh, the game talks, he did Sonic the Hedgehog for Game Gear. And I was right. Like, Ancient was the people. I, I just am now making that connection. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so if you want to recap of that, it was on there. Streets of Rage 2. In 1992. A lot of people's favorites. JD's favorite, right? I think 4 is his favorite. Really? Everybody's favorite is 4. Really? Yeah. I gotta play it. We should. Okay. Uh, Beyond Oasis, obviously, 1994, a.k.a. The Story of Thor. Yeah. 1994. Yeah. Poet, I did not. This is the first IP. Yes. By Ancient. Yeah. Uh, The Legend of Oasis, so they're continuing their saga. Right, we may get to that one day. 1996. Or the snow. That's want that Saturn love. <laughs> that Eva, Vativa? Volva. Volva? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Urethra. <laughs> Urethra on the Saturn, 1996. Car combat. Oh, yeah, there's some sentence I read on some website. While Nintendo was working on their RPGs, they were making Volva. <laughs> Car combat. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tamagotchi pack. I don't want to talk about that because I want to talk about anime chick story one. <laughs> the classic. Card captor Sakura. Oh. On the PlayStation. My girlfriend be stuck. She likes that series. It's an anime. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. What the hell is that? So I came out on the PlayStation in the year 2000. Interesting. And then Car Battler Joe for Dude. the Game Boy Advance. One of the epic Joes of all games. So does that mean that they're they're done? They're not a company anymore? Did you see that Car Battle or Joe's an RPG? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a, probably a car PG. They play like Gran Turismo. Or mm-hmm. Their stats are the the torque. Wow. Uh, does that mean that they're done? Like, is this an ancient? No, they have uh, more recent games. For some reason, I think that this website had capped off at 2003. That's when mm. the interviews are done. So if you look on the ancient wiki, uh, it may be a little outdated, but they have more games since. Okay, good yeah. for them. Yeah. I'll take this bit. Sure. Yuzo Koshiro, well-renowned Sega artist, uh, musician. You can see footage of him like having concerts, playing like the Streets of Rage soundtrack. He is the co-founder of Ancient, along with his mother and his sister and a couple other people. He is the producer and composer of Beyond Oasis. Here's a quote from Wiki. He's often regarded as one of the most influential innovators in chiptune and video game music, producing music in a number of genres, including rock, jazz, symphonic, and various electronic genres, such as house, electro, techno, trance, and hip hop. Uh, I know him from soundtracks such as Streets of Rage, Shenmue, and Etrian Odyssey. Do you know much of Koshiro's work or any of it? <laughs> All of it. Well, I play every video game just about on mute. So generally, no. But I've obviously played Etrian Odyssey. And unfortunately, 
And if you're a fan of the channel, you know that I've played Shenmue as well. <laughs> so um, actually, ironically, I think I am more in tune with his music than I think. Um, uh, Shenmue, was actually, the music was not terrible. It, it carried the game, actually, quite frankly. Etrian Odyssey, I couldn't tell you one song from that game um, because I, I could not imagine playing Etrian Odyssey and not listening to something else. So um, <laughs> don't remember those, but Shenmue was really good. And everyone really likes the Streets of Rage soundtrack. So. They are fist bumpers. So we should jam out to it sometime. How about this game, Beyond Oasis? I uh, played most of it on mute. No, you didn't. I heard you play it on the TV. Well, when I play on TV, I had that going. But in general, like when I'm, I played most of it on my handheld, I didn't. But I don't, I don't remember any songs from it. They are kind of unremarkable, although they are complex. I saw some music scholar like break down like the chords or something or you know when you put the notes on the, the thing mm -hmm. it's actually like the the melody changes throughout or not the melody i, I don't have the music like the language. Key? yeah it's not just like a loop yeah, you know yeah. yeah that's cool i mean if that's his specialty yeah <laughs> music we got an interview here from the next level tnl i don't know anything else about them other than they interviewed yuzo koshiro I think this is from 2003. I pulled a couple questions. When did you start making games as part of Ancient? And what was Ancient's first independently produced game? So 1991 to 92, you got Sonic Game Gear. And then our first non-commissioned game was Story of Thor called Beyond Oasis in North America. Also TNL, how many people working at Ancient now? 15. It's a family-oriented business. Five programmers, two sound designers, three planners. Does that affect your thoughts on Beyond Oasis as a game? Well, it's great that it's a family-oriented business, and, and we'll be getting to more of what I think of that um, later when we actually talk about the gameplay, because um, it does actually impact that a little bit. But I found it interesting it said our first non-commissioned game was Story of Thor. I wonder if they were working on this game as like a passion project before the, uh, the whole RPG push happened. Maybe they're like, oh, we hit, ours is an RPG, and they were able to get in. So maybe this one was actually, they were working on it and then just got to go ahead to add it. Yeah, you know how we like, we we read some stuff about some guy who's like inspired by Dragon Quest or something? Like, what if he was inspired by Zelda? Yeah. You know, what if he like secretly, he works at Sega, but he secretly likes the Zelda games? They're not allowed like, to like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> well, we'll make the story of Thor. <laughs> <laughs> He's secretly like on his breaks playing Zelda and he's like gotta close a cabinet. Mom, help me make a Zelda game. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. What do you think of a, fa a small family or business? That's people. great. I, I mean, you can tell that it it translates. The game is pretty well made. And for it being their first IP, I think it's functional. Obviously, it's not like a standout like masterpiece or anything, but it's really good for what it is. I agree. So what are the different ways that you can play Beyond Oasis today? Uh, well, one, you can not be a pleb and boot it up on your Sega Genesis, the one that came out in 1995, the cartridge that everyone loves, the original. So do that. Yep, for all you diehards out there <laughs> want to play it the original, authentic way on the Genesis, that's the way. But you might not want to because there are other options. We're going to talk about them. The next one is Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, released on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in 2009. Yeah, you could do that. Or you could play it on the Sega Genesis Classics, which I think both of us did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, um, it's a, it was released in 2010 to 2012. They released them on like different platforms, so the release dates kind of get messy. Modern consoles in 2018. Yeah, let me explain that a little bit. So there were five volumes that released on Steam. Mm, okay. And this was part of volume five. It was the last volume. Gotcha. So that was 2012. It was the first time you could officially play Beyond Oasis on Steam. Oh, cool. But we got it on Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series S, X, etc. in 2018. So what are your thoughts about the ways to play Beyond Oasis? Some of this is going to be affected by like what we think about the game later, but... Sure. I think this, the Genesis Classics has a ton, a ton of features that make this game a lot more playable. Uh, if you want just 
I mean, and you can play it pure. From all I can tell when playing it, it seems like it's the original game. It's just got some things that a modern gamer might appreciate. <laughs> yep, including save states, and you made use of rewind feature, not to blow your spot, but, you know, I mean, there are points where it makes sense to fast forward. I thought I was playing Prince of Persia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the predecessor. Yeah. Although I think that was on NES. I don't know. Um, I agree. I think that it's really difficult to play on original hardware for like your first playthrough. Uh, it's there are some confusing puzzles, and also like the platforming is a pain in the ass. It's mostly fair with the checkpoint system, but like you know, at certain points we were stocking up on food items for health, and if you like had used them and then respawned, that would be kind of a pain in the ass. Yes, turns a five hour game into ten. This could easily be a 20 hour game if you just keep dying and not know where to go in a thing, like in a, in a dungeon. Maybe endless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't know. Yeah. Well, ready to tackle the release? Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to tackle the sales first. We only have, for means we don't understand, Right. we only have the sales in Japan, and this can't even be right. That is so low, but it's what we got. Uh, 50,000 copies sold in Japan. That's the only data that we have according to VG charts. If you Google this stuff, I mean, I spent all of five minutes looking at the front page. There's nothing else. And they don't have the North American numbers, the Europe numbers, but clearly there are numbers because you can buy the, the physical cartridge. Uh, a couple insights in the comments. Uh, one guy says, uh, that's just for Japan, and the Genesis bombed in Japan. I'm sure it sold decent in America and more than 50k in Europe. But I don't hear people talk about Beyond Oasis. It's not like people's go-to Genesis game, but it is included in the Genesis classics. Yeah, so it's there's, considered a classic. There's questions. John Sobis, we'll just have to take you at your word. Thanks, John. <laughs> Legendary John. But... It came out a little bit later, too. A recent development is a ROM hack retranslation of the original Japanese story of Thor by Jalao <laughs> <laughs> Albertson. Albertoni. It's long been known, thanks to some comments to the game's original localization producer, that the Sega of America translation was different to a certain degree from the source material. Mm. Looks like... Uh, Character name changes, lines of dialogue received altered in inflection, altered inflection and specifics. Okay, <clears throat> I don't know how much that really matters. It wasn't that much dialogue. I mean, there's more than I expected, but not a ton. Right. Hmm. Maybe his name's Thor. Didn't we ask, answer that already? We did. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's Thor's armlet. But we're going to get into that now because we're going to talk about the plot. The plot of Beyond Oasis. The player takes the role of Prince Ali. Are we talking about Aladdin? No. Talking about Thor. Who has discovered a buried gold armlet which once belonged to a wizard who waged a long war against the evil wielder of a silver armlet. Mm. The silver armlet was used to create chaos and destruction. While the gold armlet had the power to summon four spirits... The water spirit, Ditto. The fire spirit, Efreet, is what, how, they, how it looks like it would be said. The shadow spirit, Shade, and the plant spirit, Bow. Ali travels the land of Oasis, gradually acquiring the ability to summon all of these spirits in an attempt to stop the person who has discovered the ancient silver armlet and is once again using it for evil. Mm. Stop using things for evil. That's what I always tell people. Right. Don't be a baddie. Be a goodie. Be goody. Wear two shoes. I uh, I can't say I was like captivated by the plot or even much cared for it at all or even fully understood what was going on. I just knew I was supposed to go to the king and yeah. then like find out my next objective. And at a certain point, I didn't have to do that anymore. <laughs> I mean, it had a plot twist at the end. True. Although, did they allude to that at all? I don't even know he had an elder sister. <laughs> I didn't know either. Maybe we need to play the ROM hack. Yeah, maybe in the ROM hack, there's like a line where they're like, Go get, where's your sister? I don't know where she is. Yeah. <laughs> she went out for eggs. Yeah. Now she's gone. 
the whole concept is kind of cool. Like he's a treasure hunter. I think it fits nicely with what you do in the game because there are a lot of treasure chests. Mm -hmm. You get like heart pieces and stuff. Yeah. So I think more so than in like a Zelda too. In a Zelda, they're very specific, but these are just random drops. Yeah. Zelda had Zelda had random drops, but in terms of just like hearts and rupees, right? Right. They didn't really have like hunks of meat <laughs> or I mean, cheese wheels, cheese wheels, <laughs> <laughs> or or hearts that alter your character's physical statistic. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I I guess it uh, it it has a little more to. I guess we can hit the gameplay. Yeah, um, I, there was something else I wanted to mention, though. Like, I, how do you feel about presentation? Of the story? Of just the game. Like, I mean, cause I think one thing that's overlooked, like, I couldn't find information on it, but just, I thought that visually this was a striking game. It definitely is. It's definitely a very striking game. I think it looks, and we'll get into this in the gameplay, too, but I, I think it looks like a beat-em-up in how it's presented, and in, like, um... The way your character moves and the size of him. But it's also told with like I don't want I'm not sure I want to say cutscenes, but the closest thing they probably had at the time, which are close ups of the character with really good artwork for a Genesis game. I mean it looks really pretty and bright and vibrant and I, I appreciate that. I like games that are bright and vibrant. That's why we like Dragon Quest. Right. So like uh the greens come out, there's a there's a dark forest that looks dark, like the the tone is dark. And then they've got like water that you can see it moving and it's it's blue and pretty the game is very very pretty and very bright so one of my most memorable segments and this was from weeks ago but was being on the ship oh and, yeah and the camera's like all over the place yeah and then with like the kind of oozy kind of soundtrack it, you feel like kind of seasick listening to it but it's really cool mm -hmm. visual effects mountains i'm always kind of like i like being up in the mountains and see they have like a whole background there's like parallax scrolling going on yeah so that was cool yeah, no, it had a lot of really neat effects, and I guess this is technically at the end of the Genesis life cycle, right? Do you know when the Genesis like like the last games of the Genesis? It's probably around ninety five, ninety six. I couldn't tell you for sure though. There are homebrews that come out, oh, but so officially, yeah, probably around that time. You can tell they figured it out. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to go out. Yeah, uh, but yeah, the presentation was really good. It was, was top-notch, and I wonder, too, if if they had tried to release something like this earlier, if it may have done better. I don't. Again, I don't know the sales. We don't know officially, but you got to think they weren't amazing or else we'd find more about it. Mm. Or at least there'd be more than one sequel. Right. So, But there was a sequel. So I want to wonder. It's true. Prince Ali. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh... Should we do this one classic, like, gameplay RPG Archive style? Let's do it. All right. Welcome to RPG Archive. Yeah. Today, we're playing uh, Beyond Oasis. We're going to tell you how to get good. That's right. And if you want to get good, well, one way you can start is by subscribing. So, subscribe to RPG Archive for your good getting. That's the first step, yeah. yeah that's the next point. step is you leave a comment. Thanking us for helping you. Because we don't have to. We could do other things. Yeah. And listen, we're veterans. We're veterans of the game. We both saw the credits. <laughs> <laughs> I seen some. <laughs> I seen some. We actually saw them at the same time. Yeah, basically. We synchronized our endings. Yeah. It was nice. It was beautiful. Yeah. Moment. Uh, but about the game. <laughs> we're going to break down this game in terms of pieces. Uh, there's a lot of different things you have to master if you're going to be good at Beyond Oasis. Uh, in, in no particular order, we're just going to throw them at you and just take notes. Go along. Go along. First, we're going to start with is Elemental Spirits. Huzzah. There's four. Ditto, Efri, Shade, and Plant? Bo. Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I accept it. <laughs> uh, which one is your favorite? I guess they all have their purpose. But. I began to like Shade after a while, but they all have like a learning curve. I, I know for you, it's Ditto. Absolutely. Yeah, not my favorite Pokemon, but 
In terms of spirits, it's up there. It's up there. One of four. Required. Needed. So Ditto is important because she can heal you. Right. And she can shoot water out, and that which will extinguish fire. Yeah. Which is often blocking your path. Um, and she can also summon crazy winds. Yeah. That's it's like a water cyclone. I think it's important to mention that despite the fact that Genesis had three buttons, this is a pretty complex summoning system. They used everything they could for this. <laughs> which is nice. Yeah. I mean, it also goes into the combat, which we'll get into. But with... All of these summons, you can either do the standard tap, and in her case, it's just like a water bubble. I think it can freeze enemies, although I didn't have success with that. No. <laughs> if you double tap the action button for the summon, she'll heal you at yeah. the cost of some SP, which is your magic. Yep. And then if you like, if you hold it and, and then let go is yeah. when the cyclone occurs. That's like their ultimate ability. Right. Yeah, and she's your first. So, you know, it's important to kind of get the ropes down with her. She's not your best combat person, but no. as far as a, a support in the second half of the game, she's basically, you know, standard requirement. Or, Mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> Next up to bat is Efrit, or as we would call it, Efrit. He is the fire spirit. He's your best friend. He'll fight by your side. Aw. And uh, he's got three moves. He's got... Uh, he blows flames out in mm -hmm. front of him. He does like a big dash if you double tap. And if you hold it down, he'll explode in a sea of fire. Or like a bunch of little shoot, shooting things of fire. Uh, what do you think about Efreet? Each of those is nice, but I think what's best about Efreet is he kind of operates on his own, independent of you. He kind of wanders around the screen and punches enemies, lighting them on fire which is very useful when you're getting swamped. Yeah. As, for a while, you only have Ditto and Efri. There's like a long stretch before you get Shade. And you really begin, begin to appreciate Efri just as like you're playing this game with a second player. Right. Even though technically you're not. But he, he's surprised. Like his AI is actually pretty good at getting into fights with things that are close to him. Mm -hmm. So you can like set him up next to you in a fight and then you don't even really have to worry about him he can even take out a lot of enemies by himself that's right one pro tip if you need him for some of the puzzle solving i didn't learn this till later but like campfires and stuff don't get him to try and blow fire just to hold it and try and make him explode in front of it it doesn't use that much magic yeah and by the time a lot of those puzzles happen you have the recharging ring anyway so even if you miss which you will miss um <laughs> You can just unsummon him, he'll, you'll gain your magic back, and it's not that big of a deal. Right. Shade. Let's throw some shade. Well, I'm in Arizona, and we love shade here. <laughs> uh, but shade will, if you tap it, hold on, if you tap. It, okay, so shade is like your shadow, right? He, yeah. And that's how you summon him. A couple of interesting ways to summon him. Uh, so it's either from mirrors or from black knights. But he's cool because he has kind of the doppelganger effect. He's like, you can make him, if you just press it, he reaches out to That's grab nice. like a nail or something to pull you to the other side. Yes. If you hold it, uh, you can go into like meditation mode and make a doppelganger ollie go into the open, which you have to do to see like warp panels and stuff. Right. And then there is something if you just like press it twice. I just don't remember what it is. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. The main thing that, that Shade's great for is that he will prevent you from taking damage. Right. He'll take hits for you. And, yeah, in the form of his, in the form of your, really, SP. So if you fall and you weren't intending to fall. Right. Which is most of the time when you're falling. Usually you don't try to fall. That's mm -hmm. Mario. But you, you'll fall in the, it, it'll take the damage for you. Or if you get hit by an enemy, it'll, it'll, you'll see it's like separate from you for a second and take the hit. And a really cool visual effect when you fall with sh with Shade is like you'll see him like grab you from behind and pull you back up, yes. kind of Mario Kart style. Really cool stuff. And when you're walking, you you can see you can tell that there's like two different people walking at the same time. Right. Really nice effects. Really good. And then the plant spirit, Bo. I'm gonna call him Bow. Bow. <laughs> sure. Bow is lackluster, but you need him. 
Yeah. So if you just hit the the I guess it's A in the in the Genesis controller. That would be A. Yeah. A in Genesis controller. We played on switches, so it was Y, which was a little point of confusion. But, Don't ask why. <laughs> <laughs> but if you hit A, it will do like a bite, and from where it is, because it's it's rooted. Yeah. And that's a pun. But it's rooted in place. It's like a it's a Venus flytrap. Is that what they're called? Yeah. It looks like a, almost like the Mario one. Uh, and it'll it's rooted, so it'll just bite things that it can hit from the area. That's basically all you need him for. He's, yeah, he's a little confusing at first. Yeah, because it seems like he's stationary when you summon him, and you can't make a move, but you have to in order to get him in front of doors and stuff. Yeah, his double click is basically a cop out. <laughs> yeah, it's just put him where you are. Yeah, I didn't understand the the hold Y button. He's explodes, right? Yeah. And then at one point you're supposed to use him to like push down on a switch mm. to make boulders stop rolling, like have his head go down, but it never really stays in place. Yeah. That was the implied puzzle mechanic and it just, we just kind of cheesed it. Yeah. We just took the boulders. Yeah. We got, we got uh, Ditto here to help us out with that. That's right. Seal back up. Ditto and Shade. Uh... What do you th- so these kind of take the place of like in a Zelda game you get the items. How did you feel about their the way that they shape the gameplay? Without going too much into the Zelda comparisons, because I, I I think it's too hard to compare like item progression to spirits. Yeah, they they help you solve the puzzles, but I think they they function more as combat mechanisms. Yeah, some of them. I know that the shade thing, shade to me felt like the most combat centric. No, 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 no. Uh, utility centric. Oh, yeah. That's the one where like all the puzzles were. Mm-hmm. It's like you like almost like a grappling hook. Yeah. And and then the the ability to to be split and become a different person. Yeah, he's multifaceted because in some sense he is like the ocarina. Yeah, exactly. Like in Oracle Age, it's just at any point, just like go into this mode. But the warp panels are kind of few and far between. Yeah, they are. And, and it's a shame. Maybe, maybe the second one, they make it more puzzly. Yeah. Not to say that the puzzle in this game weren't hard. They There were plenty and they were very cryptic. And they were good thought experiments. Like I, I would, I kind of wish, like if we did this on short notice, but if I was really just digging into it, I might just play this without the walkthrough mm-hmm. until I really need it. Yeah, we, we, we both used it towards the end because we had a bit of a time crunch. Right. Uh, and we want to get this out. But it, I think it can be done without a walkthrough, which I can't say the same for all games of this era. Mm. Some of them are cryptic just to fuck with you and take up your time. Yeah. Um, Zelda. <clears throat> <laughs> but this one... It generally made sense, although there's some logic gaps. I don't know if we want to talk about those now, but no. but there there are some things. But in general, with these spirits, you can get through most of the game reliably and get good. And get good weapons. There's basically three. Well, you start with just an infinite dagger. You can use it. It's kind of like it seems subdued, especially at the start of the game. You got this big ogre and like a couple of villagers. Guys with these long spears, and you're here with like, cha cha. Like Peter Pan. <laughs> uh, so you're going to benefit from getting swords, bows, bombs, etc. How was your experience with the weapons in the game? Well, it has the, uh, the Breath, of, Breath of the Wild syndrome. It's not Zelda in the way people are saying. <laughs> <laughs> Where uh, you get these weapons, but they have limited ammo slash limited durability. Right. And so you, you pick up a sword of whatever, broadsword or something, they have different names, but different strengths. But the death sword. Yeah. Uh, but they, they only have 10 hits, so they only have 30 hits or whatever. Yeah. So you got to use them sparingly. On the bosses. Exactly. <laughs> you can get through most of the game with the dagger. It You you will literally just be jamming on that button as fast as you can. Right. Um, it, I mean, it, it, and it plays out when you're doing that like a, like a fighter. Like a uh, brawler from the era, honestly. It's actually complex, even with the dagger. I mean, there's, you know, different inputs and also like different levels. Like if you like just hold the jump button down, you crouch, which you need to do to hit the lower enemies like snakes. 
At some points, there's gargoyles in the air, so you have to do a jumping slash. Yeah. There's even a, a a button input press. If you press, I think it's like jump and dagger, where you'll do like a backflips kick slash. Is that how I was doing that? I was only doing it on accident. I think I have it down here, too. Oh, okay. I did the spin a couple times, but more just for fun. Okay. Button C and button B. Bash unruly uglies with a jump kick. There you go. But I think that swords were my best friend. Bows were needed at a couple points, but not really. Yeah, and they were freaking weak. I think I used them for one boss, the one where you're on the platforms, like, spinning around. I that think one. I used them for that. And that's yeah. pretty much it. I, I, I can see... I would never use this. Right. <laughs> and I think I ran out in that fight. So I literally just had to jump over and start hitting with the sword, which sucked, but it is what it is. Bombs are not even really a combat thing. I think they're more needed for some of the puzzles, which I wasn't thinking that way when I was like looking at some of these buttons. And if I had thought that way, like this was a puzzle utility, like that might have helped me play a little more naturally. You mean, yeah, like when there's like a button that's out of reach. Right. You just toss a bomb at it. Yeah, because you wouldn't think the whole purpose of a bomb is to explode. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily to weigh something down. Yeah. So uh, Which makes sense, but Zeldas never do it. So I'm just like so Zelda trained. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like I got to use this bomb to like blow up a wall. Maybe there's a cracked wall somewhere. Not to push a switch down. Yeah. Well, I don't know that it totally makes sense because I guess there's some buttons that operate where you just push it down and that's it. Right. So I guess in that way it does make sense, but I feel like a lot of times it, it, it would just, it would be on there and then it would explode, so technically it's gone. Yeah. But the, the action of pressing the button was completed, so I guess it makes sense, but I, I just don't think of it logically that way. Okay. Uh, this game does have platforming. Yeah. It's, um... The hardest platforms are the platforms. <laughs> it's like the ones that are moving or sometimes where there's like a space in between like these pillars. I foresee that a lot of young children played this game and could not get past some of these segments. and th 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 That might have been the game being over for them. Right. But fortunately, with the falls, it really doesn't take that much health and it respawns you at your nearest like actual piece of like land that yeah. you started at. Well, sometimes this ties back into combat, but sometimes you have to jump onto a platform where there are enemies and they, and some enemies are actually programmed to attack you while you're jumping. Right. And when you're jumping onto the platform, they'll hit you before you land. <laughs> That's that, the worst. And they push you back too. That is a jerk off move. <laughs> Cause it, it hits you, you take the hit damage, then you fall off the ledge and then you don't even get to go back on that platform. Yeah. You have to start all the way over. Okay. But one of my, workarounds for that you know because you know there were parts with like the orbs that were like floating around you yes i think we're thinking of the same spot <laughs> yeah my strategy was to charge the dagger mm. so hold it and wait till they come up close and then you slash at them well in that same area though there's a guy there's like this big guy with like a, an axe or something and he's on a platform that you need to get to and he's literally just waiting for you right like a shithead but that's what you need the bow for that's true maybe maybe i, I could have Switched over to the bow and made it easier. I don't like it. I don't like the bow. <laughs> well, there's a secret about that. But before that, I, I do want to say one other thing about the platforms. My other strategy, I didn't really get it down until like I died enough times. I was always compelled to run and jump. Mm. But as a strat the, the downfall of that was that you go sliding off the platform. Yes. So the trick is really not to let the, the depth, you know dissuade you just do a normal jump and you'll probably make it yeah yeah he jumps pretty far and you can see the shadow when he's doing it so if you just watch for the shadow and you're over the platform mm -hmm. you're generally pretty good um and then if you don't see it uh, shade will carry you back right <laughs> well that's another strategy is to just have shade with you <laughs> yeah so yeah. if all else fails bring shade or ditto yeah, it was good. Yeah. Secrets. You passed these. I did one. But there's These a apparently are the hardest parts of the game. They are. I can attest to that. So there's an infinite atomic bow, an infinite omega sword, and then an infinite bomb bag. I read about that later. So I don't I can't verify that one, but the other two I can. So 
these are beneficial items if you have the wherewithal to get them. With the Atomic Bow, I could not see this being done without save states, especially the Omega Sword. So the Atomic Bow was kind of like a mini boss rush that just kept going and going. And the really tricky part to it was you were not allowed to get any treasure chests. But there was no signifier to suggest don't get those treasure chests. Oh, like it just ends if you get one? Yeah, you don't get the a real treasure if you open one of them. Oh, I see what you're saying. And then also, some of the later ogres and stuff, they can destroy the tre treasure chests. And that uh, ruins your chance of getting the real treasure at oh, the end. Of, so you go through this whole thing and not get it. This is according to some guy's guide. I, I, it was just one of the first ones that came up. But I followed it to a T. And then there's two warp panels. Take the right and you get the infinite atomic bow. So you said the bows are weak as shit, but not the atomic one because this one blows up. Yeah. I got. I had one of those at the end of the game. And it has an alternate use that's really cool. Really? Yes. I didn't even figure it out. It can blow up the ice crystals so you don't need every... Oh, yeah, yeah. I so, know that. So uh, you don't have to summon that guy, which is nice to not have to run back to wherever that might be. You right. have infinite of it. L to start pelting it. Yeah. Never even need that guy again, quite honestly. Yeah. Except for to light the stupid lanterns. The only downside of the atomic bow is that if you shoot too close, it'll blow up in your face and hurt you too. But that's awesome. Yeah. Go out with style. <laughs> Infinite Omega Sword seems like the coolest one to get, but you have to go through a hundred level uh, dungeon. Jesus. And it's not easy. You got to fight like these big baddies and stuff. So I didn't do that, but that would have been nice. And the infinite bomb bag. Anyways, those are our tips and tricks. That's how you get good at Beyond Oasis. Well, one more. I forgot what mode they called it. Yeah. But there's a mode you can do, it's called like God Mode or something, where you don't collect any heart pieces. Oh, wow. And you're considered, it does something special for you. Oh, we should talk about those. Uh, but I don't remember what they call it or even if there's any benefit to it other than bragging rights. <laughs> uh, I did want to just uh, cover some stuff from the manual. Prince Ali starts with the 200 hit points and a skill level of one. He increases the hit points by collecting level up hearts or by receiving a certain number of XP points. But it's never really indicated. You don't get like a... Da -da 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 Ollie's two. You know, you don't get that. And it's not a clear indicator on the menu, but you found it out that the heart, point, heart pieces, when an en enemy randomly drops one, increases your HP. Yes. It's hard to get those, though, because they have like four or five seconds before they disappear. They completely disappear. And there's no telling like where it's going to... like. It spawns where the enemy dies, but if you, like, knock them off into, like, the ether, then you can't grab it. You know what the trick is to getting them every time? What? Hit that rewind button Ooh. on the switch. That's a good uh, trick. And, <laughs> and maybe maybe Shade would help, too, for grabbing it. Oh, I never tried that. But you'd have to have them out. You can't randomly summon. That's the only thing that sucks. You can. Uh, I, I was able to randomly, not randomly, but specifically summon uh, a Freet and um the the, the other one oh ditto bow, bow. ditto oh, ditto um they i got these like little jars and it said that it could summon them it, yeah. said, it said it was for them so you you could use them okay. now why you would do that just to get a heart piece <laughs> it seems very rare uh i would i don't wouldn't recommend it yeah it's only like two hp anyway i think i ended with 270 okay i don't remember how much i had there was another thing. You know those spirit gems? They seem so random throughout the game. Mm -hmm. But they actually dictate something to do with your power level. So this is also from the menu. The number of spirit gems Ali has in his possession determines the strength of that spirit's magic. Mm. So you're leveling up the skill. Right. Interesting. But they're like, those ones are predetermined. Those oh. are in very specific treasure chests. You ever pick up like one of the random blue spheres or the red spheres? Yeah, yeah. That would be for like Ditto's healing or Efreet's fire. Treasure hunt. <laughs> Basically uncharted. Yeah. You're Nathan Drake. And the manual has a couple last hints. Uh, I think the only useful one I saw, and then you for you, is Ditto's healing. Um... You may be stymied at one point or another by locked doors or barred passages. When you're at a loss for what to do next, try clearing the area of monsters. And the answer may well appear in front of you. A lot of keys in this game. Yeah, and a lot of them were from clearing out monsters. Right. So get used to fighting. 
And if not, so you often get treasures anyway out of doing that. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. Uh, I did want to talk about the bosses. Okay. Um, they were pretty good. Mm. I would actually argue that, not in every way, but in a lot of ways, they're better than Zelda bosses. Yeah. They're really cool. Uh, especially the last one, like visually, mm-hmm. is really badass. Um, it's definitely, it was a treat just to look at it. Right. You know what I got a flashback to? You know the, uh, so there's that dragon boss it's not the red one but the green one that you fall into the pit i think the magician like drops you there Mm -hmm. and then it's like got us it's like throwing flaming things at you or boulders or something and then like every so often he sticks his tongue out and you gotta hit it where it's like chasing you like side scrawling almost yes you know what that reminds me of metroid yeah i knew it might be too i didn't make that connection until you were saying it but yeah they were really creative really well thought out uh even the first boss that scorpion one that's hard. Yeah. And they have moving pieces. Like, you can take out the claw of the scorpion, but you don't have to. Oh, I didn't, maybe I didn't notice that. So, it's interesting. Um, thinking, like, I never really had to go to the walkthrough either to figure out how to beat the boss. They were pretty speci- They were pretty explicit. They, they were, they're good at visually showing you how to do it. Right. And I don't think they're, like, too cheap either. Like, with, like, oh, hit this part, and then it's this part, and then it's that. No, it's, they let you experiment. Yeah. There was, there was one where I, where I questioned the design a little bit. It was, it was the one that, it would, like, bang the ground or something, and rocks would fall from the ceiling. Oh, the golem. Yeah. And it wasn't, like, a particularly hard boss. Like, it didn't hit you that hard, so I didn't really care that much. Until he did his, like, bing, 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 bing. Yeah, that was where you'd have to watch it. But that made sense. Yeah. The rocks, though... They would usually end up on your side of the of wherever you were trying to kill them from. And it was really hard to dodge. Yeah. I don't know. I ended up just taking a lot of hits. Yeah. And was like, whatever. Because it didn't hit that hard. But that was a questionable design choice. Other than that, I found most of the bosses to be really fun. Really, really energetic. So, get good. We gave you all the tools you need. Have at it. Yeah. Archivers. Right, let's talk about the legacy of Beyond Oasis. Uh, it's review scores. Yeah, this game reviewed pretty positively. I remember Alex saying in the Shinobi 3 thing that when he was reviewing the information, this game actually scored better than Shinobi 3. So by that right, it should have won. Yeah. But I actually, I conceded well, who gave it? The, who gave it the RPG of the year? The game fans? Yeah, what was it? Game Game Masters or something? Game Masters? Um, <laughs> game Masters. <laughs> the Game Masters, yeah. Um, that's the golf tournament every year for gay people. Um, some awards uh, guys gave it Action RPG of the Year. Yeah. That's what I didn't even know people called them Action RPGs back then. Yeah, that's I funny. thought that was like an evolved term over time. Yeah. There that's you go. It. ARPG. That's what it is. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, well, the game masters liked it. And we did too. I would put it over Shinobi Three, even though I never played Shinobi Three because I don't like Shinobi. Mm. <laughs> yeah, how do you feel about this as a Genesis game? I know you're not a fan of the Genesis. I was blown away. Yeah, wow. I couldn't believe it. I, I, I... so I think there's a lot to this game. Uh, it almost mm-hmm. felt like a fan project. I could tell where their influences were. That's why I say that. It's like like a lot of games they. Like Nintendo games, they're trying to like carve their own way. Yeah, and I respect. I mean, obviously that's great. Um, a lot of games that I play, they're they're triple A, and they're trying to tell their own story. They're trying to carve their own niche, and and make they think like nobody's done this before. I'm going to do this. This game is almost the opposite to me. It was like, I really like um, Golden Axe, but I also really like Zelda. <laughs> And it's like, they were probably playing Zelda and be like, wouldn't it be cool if, like, this game had... Because Zelda's never really been, like, the greatest combat game. Except you could argue Ocarina of Time, but that's a different time period anyway. We're talking more, like, Link to the Past, that kind of Zelda. Um, it's never been the greatest in terms of combat. It's always been just decent. Um, but they're like, what if we had Zelda, but it also played, like, a really badass, like, brawler? And they're like, yeah, let's do it. And you could tell with a free that they were like, wouldn't it be cool if it was multiplayer? And they're like, yeah, it'd be badass. Which it would be. 
it would be fucking awesome if this game were multiplayer. Uh, but they said, you know, we can we can add this, and it's kind of like that. Okay. And then, uh, and then yeah, they're like, let's just make it like a combination of the two that I really, really like. And I swear, if we interviewed them, that's what they would say. Because it just feels like it. Well, they had the legacy of making Streets of Rage 2. Right. So they already have the beat em up style. Yeah. And now they're just mixing it with the whole concept for Thor, I guess. Thor. But Thor, I'll, yeah. one of these, but there's a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very functional. It plays really well. And I think, you know, we're talking about it as an action RPG, but it's really a DRPG. It's a dungeon based RPG. I think the best parts it pulls mm. are from the Zelda aspects. I think that when you say dungeon RPG, it conjures more of like Diablo. Like roguelike. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I get what you're saying, and you're not wrong. Yeah. But I think people will, will argue over semantics on that one. That's fair. Yeah. Argue away. <laughs> it's not even needed at this point. You, you debunked it. <laughs> the game's 1994, guys. Yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, it seems pretty hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wonder how functional, like, if we could play it without resorting to the cheaper methods. That would be tough. It would definitely turn it from a five-hour game to something longer. But we know it now at this point. We do. But you know what's weird is that this game had, like, a weird difficulty curve. Because it was kind of normal and then kind of like, okay, this is doable. I think I can beat the game. So, holy shit. There's, like, a three-dungeon sprawl of where they don't really give you a lot of healing items. Right. And I was save Satan like a bitch right. through that. Yeah. And then at the very end, they were like, this game's about to get epic, so we're going to give you a bunch of healing items. True. And then you kind of don't really need them at that point, because you've, you've mastered the game, and it's like, oh, I'll just get healed by my healer, and then I won't take damage from Shade. So I kind of know how to not get hurt. Well, one so thing it's, it's I weird uneven. read from the manual was the respawns actually work based on where you saved the game. Oh, really? And we weren't saving. That's true. <laughs> We're doing a lot of saving. So, but I, it also, it, like, it would respawn you at the start of a dungeon, too. So maybe there was some autosave feature or something. Yeah. But maybe if you were saving in different rooms, like, that's how it would work. Maybe. Maybe it is more functional than I'm giving it credit for. I know this is not on our list, but what do you think about a remake for Beyond Oasis? Um, it, you know, different times. This, you know, you can tell the influences were linked to the past and probably their experience making, you're right, Streets of Rage 2. Right. Um, Do you think it's even needed? I'm going to say something that's super douchey. Sure. Uh, they have it. It's called Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This This formula is really good. And it's now been done. It's like literally the open world action game now. Right. Like The Witcher or uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. But does Dark Souls let you conjure up spirits? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Literally, it, especially in Elden Ring, that's how I played the entire game. Is I would, I would conjure up myself. It'd be basically, basically the shade. But not like with the more mythical aspect of the unlocks or the puzzles? Puzzle progression? It has some puzzle progression. Not as much. Platforming? Um, the, the platforming is more of... Especially... In, well, in, other, in the other Dark Souls, you can't jump. Okay. There, there, there's like a little window where you can, but it's not like a main feature. Mm. In Elden Ring, you can jump. It's actually promoted and it's a feature. There's a little bit of platforming, but um, it's never been... It's not like it is in Beyond Oasis where it's literally... Well, I should... There are some platforming like this, but uh, it's not as big of a thing. Okay. Uh, but in, in other, you know, like Uncharted, there's, I think the fourth one is a little more open world. I, I never played it, so don't eat me alive. But um, there, there's a little more platforming there. Like, they, they, a lot of people do the things this game tries to do in different ways. Um, I don't, this might, this game might be just kind of redundant. <laughs> True. Okay. At this point. Yeah, I'm trying to like imagine, I'm almost pseudo seeing it in 3D, but then I'm like, would people like this? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, I think it was actually, now that you mentioned that, now that you're talking about like a remake or whatever, it's actually a very forward-thinking game. Because it's like, it doesn't really bog you down with the RPG specifics, but it does have them like running on in the background. So it's it's kind of thinking ahead of like, maybe this is where the action RPG should be. And a lot of games now do operate that way. 
Even the weapon breaking. I know we're joking about it being Breath of the Wild, but... Breath of the Wild? <laughs> were they inspired by Beyond Oasis? Probably. Maybe. I can't think of another game that did it in such a way. What if they played it in 2015 and were like, holy shit. We gotta make <laughs> these things break. <laughs> it's it's kind of a, cl- a clever uh, mechanic. Yeah. I think they took it, they did better with it in Legend of Zelda where, where there was more uh, diversity. Yeah. Because in this one, it's, it's like literally... It's just three weapons. <laughs> it's three weapons? Sure. Whereas Zelda is like, okay, let's take that concept and like let's make you now, you get to experiment. And True. really try different things and, and see how like the weight is different or whatever. But but it started with this, clearly. How about remaster? Do you think this needs a remaster? Or could benefit from that? That's like That's like when people say like we should remaster Chrono Trigger. Okay. It's like, do you take something that really was probably the best example of what where it was right. at the time? Like this is probably one of the better looking Genesis games. Like visually, it's just gorgeous. And like, right, that's like saying, "Should we remaster Pokemon Diamond?" <laughs> <laughs> it's the pinnacle. <laughs> you get brilliant but, diamond. Yeah, yeah. Do you like <laughs> like I'm trying to think like they, they do it to The Last of Us. So I guess that's a bad example, but The Last of Us looked great. There was really no reason to remaster it, but I guess for money, so they sure. Did. But I, I mean, no, I, I don't think they need to remaster it. And I'm trying to think how they could improve it. Because what they would, you know, what they would do is they would take the the uh, soundtrack mm. and make it orchestral, not like a MIDI. Mm-hmm. But I think it loses something in that because because I I feel like that's where his passion was chip was tune trying to make this sound good with yeah. the tools he had. And it's kind of like, well, yeah, well, I got fifty people in an orchestra that could do it better, and it's like, well, all right, like <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe yes, maybe no. And then graphically, it's already beautiful. Yeah, it's freaking beautiful. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that it needs one. Should it get one? I, don't know. I guess there's still a company. <laughs> Why, not? Why not? Just play it. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think about a remaster? Well, maybe if it was like a 3DS, like 3D classic or something, that could be cool. I know that's not possible now, but mm-hmm. they had the Sega 3D classics. Like if you could see those backgrounds in 3D or like the character or something, maybe. But the, I wouldn't want. The problem is it's too combat heavy, so I wouldn't want to be jostled my 3DS around. That's true. Yeah. I get cramps on that thing on action game. Yeah. They can make Ali look a little nicer in, in game, but whatever. But then you have to trust that they don't fuck that up. Yeah. Have you seen what Square Enix did to Final Fantasies in, in the mobile ports? Mm-mm. They are laughably bad. <laughs> like, everybody hates them. Wow. They, they make them... Because they, they took what was, like, really well-crafted polygonal, you know, sprites... And they're like, let's just make it like a cartoon. And they curved all the edges and they're like these bright, like terrible looking things. Okay. And it just takes you out. Well, I know what they did to Dragon Quest. And I certainly don't want that. It's worse than that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So leave it alone. <laughs> There's no remake needed. Yeah. Well, we do, we've done it a couple times, but uh, compared it to The Legend of Zelda. Is Beyond Oasis just The Legend of Zelda? Uh, for a Sega, I guess is it a, is it the Sega Legend of Zelda? I guess right. Right. Um, I don't know enough about Sega to know. To like, I've never dug into their library enough to to be able to answer that. I will say it feels a lot like Zelda in certain parts, but the spirit is different because the spirit is a lot of combat. Right. And Zelda is that's it's Zelda is very much towards exploration, puzzle solving, and, and combat was like, hey, we gotta have a sword. And Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Zelda feels more whimsical, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this Whereas is more dull. This is rough European, like, I, but I guess Middle Eastern, too. <laughs> like, these big, ugly ogres. Like, that's not a Zelda thing. It, but then you would say, oh, it's, well, it's Sega's version of Zelda. But I still don't see it because, you know, Zelda's very much like item based progression. And yeah, there is some combat. Like people say, like the Oracle games are more combat heavy, you know, for the two D ones. <laughs> the, you know, it has dungeons, it has switches, it has platforming. So I think there's commonalities, but I agree that I think that um, I think it is combat heavy. Even the puzzles, like we were talking about, you got to clear an entire room of enemies to get the key, 
or like you know there's like very specific ways to get the keys i don't it's very easy to say it is zelda-esque but i think that's under uh under appreciating yeah this game i agree that's that's a very a very quick way to write off this game yeah and i think it it loses something when you say that loses about half of its game because I think one half of the DNA is firmly in Zelda. Yeah. But there's a whole other half that's like, let's make a... And I don't mean to be, this to be insulting. But I, um, let's make a smarter beat-em-up. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's what they're also trying to do. Yeah, because I mean, like, even... I'm thinking, like, Link to the Past. Like, okay, they got the guards, too. You got to fight the guards. But it's usually they're just, like, holding their sword out. It's one in a room or something. And then they just kind of yeah. look around and just charge at you. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> But in this one, you got, like, one guy with a spear, another guy with a bow, you got a big ogre in the corner, and it's like, how can I get out of this scenario? Even when I was doing the atomic bow challenge, they drop you into the, the, the first level, and you're surrounded by five guards. Wow. It's like, holy shit, all I got is my dagger out. Like, what am I supposed to do right now? Wow. My other weapons are going to break if I use them. <laughs> so it's just a different cognitive experience. That and how am I going to use my elements? The elements are a big, I think, identifying feature of this game. Mm -hmm. They lend to the to like the the setting, I think. Because except for Bao, except for Bao. Well, Bao even is part of the armlet. Because the whole point of this game is to get the gold armlet, master it, so you can take out the silver armlet and figure out what happened to your sister. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of like a premise, it's functional, but also in terms of the narrative, it's functional. That's true. It goes beyond the Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> the Zelda Oasis. So uh, we're wrapping this up. What are your final thoughts on Beyond Oasis? I liked it. You know, uh, I liked it when I played the little bit for the throwdown. But I liked it even more playing it now. I'm actually reconsidering my vote for Shinobi 3. Because, like, I think there is a lot to this game. And it's easy to just play, like, even just an hour and be like, oh, well, it's cool. But, like, you know, Zelda does it better. Yeah, but it's actually really cool. Yeah, I'm I, I'm blown away by it. I uh, I didn't know what to expect going in. Um, but it's uh, it's got surprising depth to it. Um, it's got a lot of secrets, and I was I was very impressed. I I, I had always heard it was the Zelda for Genesis, and I. While I think it's meant as a compliment, um, because it's generally held in decent regard, if not high regard, I think it also, there's so much more to it than that. So really, really impressed by it. Um, it even felt like an RPG towards the end. Uh, at first, I was I was a little bit skeptical. Yeah. But towards the end, I was like, okay, it, it, I can see the progression in it. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised by that. Right. Call it Dark Souls. Yeah. That's a compliment. That's a compliment. They should yeah. update the wiki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the Dark Souls of Genesis. Yeah, yeah. Sega's Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. They should update the Dark Souls wiki. It's Beyond Oasis. <laughs> yeah. Point two. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Those are my thoughts. Anyways, I'm glad we picked a good one for the first live archive. It's been a blast. Boom. Um... Yeah, make sure you go check out Majority. A lot of good stuff over there. Uh, and he's gonna, they're gonna talk about Fantasy Star. So make sure you, or no, right now there's it's a tie right between uh, Golden Axe yeah, and and uh, Streets of Rage. Yeah, so go vote. Otherwise, we're going to the wheel. The wheel. Dun dun dun. Or maybe you want the wheel. I don't know. Wheel's cool. I like it. But go vote. Your vote counts. Yeah. For this one. Yeah. It matters. All the time. Unless you're voting for Streets of Rage. Vote for RPG Archive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, vote for me. Just stay here. Go to go to his channel and vote in the comments for RPG Archive. That he sent you there. Yeah. And then come back here. <laughs> and tell Spencer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Do all of that. Yeah. But for now, do that, but we can consider Beyond Oasis Archive. That we can. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, everybody.